I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in today's debate, and like other members, my constituency, Kaysort, is full of cases related to the mismanagement of the tax credits contract, and quite unprompted, I would like to thank my constituency team back up the road of Ian, Colin, Jen and Louise, who have dealt with a large volume of cases, and always with great sensitivity and professionalism. So over a long period of time, Her Majesty's Government creates a system. They charge Her Majesty's revenues and customs to administer that system. HMRC outsource the process, but not their responsibility. The chosen enforcer this time was Concentrix. But it's unfair to lay all the blame at the door of Concentrix staff. Indeed, it's unfair to lay all the blame at the door of HMRC staff. The welfare system, as designed, is flawed, seriously flawed. And while we continue to support the current welfare system, the blame is ours. Far from enabling people and giving them the financial security to build their own lives, the welfare system has made more, life more complicated for those that need support. Dealing with poverty is an ongoing struggle in constituencies such as mine, where deep-rooted inequality continues to stifle ambition and opportunity. Yet, like so many other policies, my constituents are once again disproportionately affected by UK government's inadequacies. I have already heard excellent contributions from members which have outlined the specific examples of why a tax credit contract has been so appallingly mismanaged. But the saddest indictment on UK government welfare and tax policy is that there are still so many people in desperate need of tax credits in the first place. Concentrics are clearly not blameless in this situation. Their faults and mistakes are well documented. But while the UK government may solve the problems inherent in this contract by bringing it back in-house, we are still left with a wider problem of government services being delivered by private companies. Private companies should never be in the position of delivering vital public services. Citizens and governments should have a direct relationship with each other. Taxpayers contribute directly to the government, but when the government is going when the money is going in one direction, it should be going in the other direction. It should not be filtered through a private company before it gets to the individual. I will give way. Honourable gentleman, for give, giving way. I agree with him in actual fact. I think these are human issues. They are far too sensitive for private companies to be making a profit out of, quite frankly. And interestingly enough, when I first raised this in January with the Leader of the House and asking for a debate or a statement on this, I was told just send me the problem with the case. Why did it take eight or nine months of the BBC to finally get a minister at that dispatch box to do something about it? You make your point very eloquently. Companies bidding for UK government contracts are not doing this on the basis of how they can deliver a fairer and more equal society, but on the basis of how they can save money for the government. Companies are incentivised to deliver these results, and ultimately their first loyalty is to the owners and the shareholders. By offloading services to private companies, the UK Government and HMRC are simply trying to absolve themselves of responsibility when there is a problem. And we have seen these problems appear time and time again. G4S, ATOS, Concentrix. These are not names that inspire public confidence in the delivery of high quality public services. So how many more disasters is it going to take before the UK Government realises that corporations should not be delivering public services? My constituents have no interest in government reviews, PR exercises or ministerial statements about the issue. All they want is to be paid what they are due on time without the risk of it being arbitrarily removed. The existing welfare system needs ripped down and replaced with something suitable for the 21st century. A couple of weeks ago, we had a debate in Westminster Hall about universal basic income. There is support across parties for a serious investigation. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would say we should stop treating the symptom and start treating the entire patient. Maybe, just maybe, the time for a universal basic income has come.